So today's a good day to ask questions. If you have them, tomorrow you have a quiz. Today is the 11th. So 10, 11, 22. And again, quiz tomorrow. So all this is going to be is a series of quiz review questions. That's the worst cue that anyone has ever made. I'm going to fix that. I won't be able to sleep tonight if I... Oh, that's so much better. Good. I don't know how long the quiz will be. You know, when I write these things, I just write them from the mindset of like, what do I have to cover? So if I can get away with six questions, I'll do six. If I go, oh, I need one of those, then it, you know, that's, I just write out of necessity. So um, I can't really say that with any certainty. But these questions will be representative of what you can expect. So let's start with this one. And as you've grown accustomed to, sometimes you'll get fractional answers and just sometimes you won't, right? So it just depends on um, the situation. I'm gonna pause this real quick. So what do we do first? Mm -hmm. And then what? Right, so I'll give you a moment like I always do and then you can start reading me your answers. I will only accept your answers if the X comes first. So if you give me an answer of like five is greater than X, I'm just going to stare blankly at you. I won't write that down. I refuse as a matter of principle. So remember to get your X on the left. Bryce, what'd you get, bud? Okay. As always, if you agree, <clears throat> awesome. You can just hang tight. If you disagree, make sure you... Uh, read your answer so that I can get it up onto the board. So if I subtract four from both sides, my next line, I would still have the three X, I would still have my sign oriented the same. And if I have the negative four and I take away, I subtract the 20 to make it move, I get negative 24. And then if I divide both sides by three, since it's a positive three, I don't have to switch the sign. I leave it the same way. And negative 24 divided by three is negative eight. And nice job, Bryce, and a bunch of others, I'm sure. Remember, we don't like this answer. It's not wrong per se, but um, we like it when it's flipped. So when you switch the sides, you move the X, you move the negative eight, the inequality sign has to follow suit, right? Please express all answers like this. And then we'll have to graph, of course. That's always part of the deal when we're learning inequalities. So um, Bryce, since you gave me the answer, I'll let you help me out. Um, what would I do? Mm -hmm. There's, you missed one detail, but. Good job. Make your circles nice and big. Uh, some people have this idea that these cute little circles are the way to go. They're actually just annoying because then I can't tell if they're open or closed. So make it big enough that it's obvious what you're trying to uh, communicate. Yep, and it's less than, so we just simply shade to the left and put a big old fat arrowhead on there to show that it goes forever. Any questions about that? Next one I have for you is negative one half of X <clears throat> minus 11 is less than negative eight. I'll give you a moment. get Sebastian. I heard x is greater than negative six. Tegan, you must have something different. Okay.
thing. Okay. Okay. Consider it done. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. It's okay. Three. three halves. Three halves. Three over two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Since I'm the guy with the fake pen, I'll just tell you what I would do. I would add 11 first. There's no need to worry about a fraction like this because we don't have to interact with the fraction. Like we don't have to combine them with anybody else. It's a harmless fraction for now. So I'm going to go ahead and add 11 to both sides. You didn't have to do it this way. If you want to discuss other options when I'm done, that would be great. So we have the negative one half of X just transfers down. We don't change our sign yet. Negative eight plus 11 is of course three. At this point, you, you, know, you can't avoid it any longer. You have to get X by itself now. What's the most efficient route? Mm -mm. You can do better than that. Right. If I take and I monster bracket this equation now and I multiply both sides, not just by two, but by negative two, that's a really powerhouse move because what happens is the negative that I'm multiplying by will kill the other negative. And the two and the one half will also cancel each other out. So basically this multiplication problem right here is a perfect clean kill. And then if I multiply, of course, on the other side also by negative two, that's where the action happens. And so all of this right here goes kaput. And then I just have to be aware of what I did. And I have to say, okay, so I'm gonna bring my X down. I am going to change my sign because I multiplied by a negative. Multiplying and dividing by a negative both have the same impact. And switching signs, you know, and then three times negative two is negative six. So this first one that I heard is definitely the winner. So nice job there, Sebastian. Anybody else who got that? Good job. There are alternatives to that method, like going back to the beginning. If you're an early fraction killer, there's no harm in getting rid of the fraction like right away. Did anyone else take a different tactic? Okay, well, then that's, I think, then I'll just tell you, I think that's what you probably should have done is add first and then go ahead and worry about the fraction later. Uh, to graphing that, uh, I won't graph them all probably today, just uh, in the interest of your time, but just a few. So I would mark my boundary. The boundary is always where things switch from being true to false. Three halves is where it's at. I'm going to circle it and I am not going to color it in and I'll shade to the right since it says X is greater than. Any questions about that? Uh, yeah, clearly <clears throat> that says negative six. Are you, are, you are your eyes struggling this morning? Did, did it look like a two thirds? Sometimes my negative sixes look weird. Just, uh, <laughs> sorry. Thank you. Um, other than that, any questions? Other than your teacher being a knucklehead? Good job. If you got that, good job. If you didn't, I hope you know why and that you're able to fix that going forward. Next one, I have 5x <clears throat> minus 12 is at least x minus 10. That's a big minus sign. I don't know why. That minus means business. I'm going to pause my recording real quick and switch my attendance now that everybody's here. <clears throat> Which got for me there, B. Hansen? Okay. You stole Tegan's answer. I'll get you first next time, Tegan. I've, you've been priced twice in a row, so. You're, you're first next. Anybody else?
you by now should be comfortable and know who you are. Are you a variable on the left person or are you a always keep the variable number positive person? You should probably by now have figured that out. Um, and it, honestly, yeah, and I like, I'm a to the left guy, quite frankly, too. Um, but it doesn't matter in this case, right? If you're a left person, you're going to subtract the X across. If you're a keep it positive person, you're going to subtract the X across. It just doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and start rolling with this. The fact that I haven't heard any other answers means you guys must like this one. So um, I'm going to subtract the X across to the left and I'm going to get 4X. And while I'm at it, I figure if the X's are going to take over the west side, then the numbers have to take over the east side. So while I'm here, I might as well kick that minus 12 to the other side as a plus 12. And negative 10 plus 12 is positive 2. And then when I divide both sides by 4, I get X is greater than or equal to 2 divided by 4. I will just caution you, the answer that's going to get you on Mr. Ahern's bad list, and you don't have to raise your hand and admit it if you said this, but if you said this, then that's where we're getting into the mild offensive zone there, right? You know that you just because you see a 2 and a 4 in a division sign doesn't mean the answer is 2. Right, small divided by big cannot equal a whole number. So x is less or greater than or equal to one half is one hundred percent perfect, correct? Um, and so let's do maybe one more graph since this one is a slightly bit different. I would mark my boundary at one half. Remember, you do not need to mark surrounding numbers and all that; just what you need. And I would color in my circle this time. That's important. That tells the reader of my graph that that point counts. And then I go to the right since it's greater than. Any questions there? Okay, we're gonna get a little tougher now, right? We've done our warm up there. Everything's been pretty fluffy puffy so far. Next one, I have negative three times the quantity of X minus two is no more than four times the quantity of two X minus 10. I have no idea what the answers to these are, so we'll be getting them for the first time together. Expect fractions. You know, when I start writing problems like this, where I'm just throwing numbers on the paper, fractions are just going to happen. I promised Tegan that I'd get her, so I'll come back if I need to. What'd you get there, um, Dice? It's 46 elevenths. Okay. And remember, there was a point in our lives where we might have thought that that meant we did something wrong. Now we're just used to it. Like, Fractions will happen, and we accept them for what they are. And I'm proud to hear that we're past the point to saying like four point something. So thank you for that. And proper fractions are just fine. Do you get the same thing? Okay. Anybody else want me to give you another little bit? If by some freak chance I haven't made this point nauseatingly clear, here it goes. When you see parentheses, you need to distribute first, right? So, I mean, there's no way that you've made it to October 11th and you're not aware of that. So we're going to take the negative three on the left-hand side and we're going to multiply and we're not going to make any mistakes. We're not going to do that. You know, you're not going to be this person. Don't be this kid, right? It's October 11th. We're done with that, right? Let's let that ship sail. We know that the negative three when it multiplies by the already negative two is gonna to switch to a plus six. 
right? Let's be done with that. Let's let that go. Bye bye, forever and ever. Is no more than, and then when we distribute over here, it's just basic. There's no negative to worry about. So we get eight x minus forty. And I like my variable on the left. I, I have faith in myself, and I know that I know how to divide by a negative. To me, it's all the same. I just would choose to not have the annoyance of having to switch my variable at the end. So I don't really care about the 8 and the negative 3. I'm going to move the 8x over to the left and just show a little bit of work this time just in case anybody wants me to. So when I subtract 8x, that's what it looks like. Remember, you don't need to keep showing that, but that's what it is. And so then on the left-hand side, I wind up with a total of negative 11 X's. And if the X's have said, well, we're taking over the left side, then that means that the six has to get moved across like that as a minus. And then I keep my sign the same and negative 40 minus six is negative 46. And then this is just a skill test at the end, right? I can tell you guys did a good job. I can already see it coming. So when we divide by the negative 11, when you divide by a negative, that's got to trigger some sort of response. Like, I know this, I remember this. When we multiply or divide by negative numbers, the Pac-Man in the middle gets flip-flopped. That's the trade-off there. So X is at least 46 elevens. Nice job. And I don't think we probably need to keep graphing. You get the idea. Good? All right. Three more. <clears throat> and then we'll work on Delta or IXL. I'll let you pick whatever you need the most. What have we not seen yet? It's my third favorite F word. What, are we, what have we not seen yet? Fractions. Very good. That was foreshadowing. This will be your last fraction-free problem for the day, so. Got that little, there you go. Bless you. Sebastian? X is greater than negative 19 thirds. Dice? X is less than positive 19 thirds. Okay. Very, very, very different answers there coming from two of my strongest students. I would be curious to see what the discrepancy is here. You got one of those, Bryce? Uh-oh. Just saying. <laughs> it's Tegan versus Bryce, Alina, and Sebastian. Don't be scared, Tegan. Stand your ground. I have no idea what's right. I could just tell you, like, it's hard for me where I sit because I'm powerless. I can try to teach you guys, and I do try. And there are certain things that, as a teacher, I just can't control. And I can't control, will my students remember how to distribute a negative? And that one's hard for me because I can't, I just, I don't know what to do to get in there. Uh, and keep it from happening. So I can tell you that your first step should say 10 
minus 2x, and then the killer here is plus 3. And I don't know what why people overlook that so often. If I figured it out, I would have written a book a long time ago and probably started touring the country to teach other math teachers how to explain that. That's a negative out front. This red negative right here is going to change everyone that comes after him in the parentheses. So let's press on. Is greater than x. And here it goes again. Oh, there's another pesky negative right there. So that negative 2 is going to have his clause in both answers that we're about to get. So he, when he multiplies by the 3x, we get a negative 6x. And here it goes again. When he multiplies by the 1, we get a negative or a minus 2. I'm not a betting man, but if I had to bet and someone got it wrong, it usually happens right there in one of those two stupid negative multiplying spots. So if you made it this far and you didn't get the right answer, then something else goofy happened. Uh, I know that I'm not going to say anything like I'm not going to move X's across. I'm not going to I'm just going to clean this sucker up. And so on the left side, I got a 10 and a three, both of which are positive. And when I add them, they make 13. And then I'll just copy down my X, my minus two X. On the left side, I've on the right side, I've got a, quite a lot of like terms. I've got a one X here and a minus six X's here. How many X's is that? Mm -hmm. Minus five or negative five X's. And then I've also got some like terms here of an already negative two and a minus four more. What's that mean? There it is, the crossroads, where you've got your variables and numbers on both sides. And um, again, for me personally, without paying any mind to who's bigger or smaller, I'm just going to usher my X's all to the left. Like you're, go you're going there eventually, just get there now. So I'm going to get them there by adding 5X to both sides like this. I want... Right, yeah, so it, does, it just doesn't matter who you are, you're going to get, you should do, if anyone added 2x to both sides, I honestly would probably call them in for flex and we'd have to have a, a good talk about what your intentions are. There's just no sensible reason for that. Um, and then if the x's are coming over to the left, I can also get rid of this 13 by subtracting him from both sides. And so what winds up happening is when all this mess, this red, white, and blue mess up here cleans up, I'm left on the left side with three x's. I keep my sign the same, and on the right side, I'm left with negative 19. Okay, lots, there it was, there it was, the, the resignation, the, the moment, you goofball. That would certainly explain why you got what you got. That, that all makes sense now. So when we divide by three here, we don't have to switch anything at all because we're dividing by a positive. So it's X is still greater than Negative 19 terms. Yeah, you didn't do it wrong. You did it differently, and that's okay. There's, um, I'm going to go ahead and assume, I maybe I'm wrong about this, Kylo, but did you get to this yellow box like the same as we did? No. What'd you get? Oh, yeah. So I think you, what you did, I'm going to take back what I said. You didn't, didn't do it different. You did do it wrong. But you're, you would have been an instance where you had two wrongs, probably, that made her right. <clears throat> and we, I hate that. Uh, and you'd lose a lot of points. I know that frustrates some kids, like on a quiz, if they get the right answer. Um, but if there's mistakes that lead to it, I'm still going to still gonna goon you. So did you find, uh, do, would you like to go through your wrong method to find your other mistake? Did, what did you does your left side say 13 minus 2x yeah and then your right side you said you oopsied negative 7x and then minus 6 yeah. and then what did you do next so you added the 7x mm -hmm. Hey, can you guys not do that and make noise while I'm trying to talk to Kyla? That's not very. So, yeah, there's your. So you have 13 minus 5x. So there's your second mistake right there. Um, negative 2 plus 7 is not negative. It's got to be positive because there's more positives than negatives. Um, 
So there's your second mistake, but you're still, I'm still not quite seeing how you got back to the right answer. You've worked some, you and me both there, sister. So what'd you do next? Oh, so you didn't get the right answer. Okay. I was going to say, man, you would have had to really do some creative, creative stuff to get there. Man. We good? All right, two more. And you know, these are going to have fractions in them. So enjoy. That is one half minus two times one third of X minus four is no more than three times the quantity of one half of X minus one close quantity plus X. I will say this again, do not kill fractions in the first step. There's literally no benefit to trying to kill the fraction because there's two fractions that you can't get to. So please just distribute the negative two through the first parentheses and the three through the second set, tough it out, ride the storm, and then we'll take care of the fractions. That's fantastic. That is good news. Young Hanson, what'd you get? I will say a couple things. Number one, that is one but ugly answer. And number two, I have no idea if it's right or wrong. So it is on the board now. It is 8111. See, I It is equally ugly. These guys are ugly mugging each other. Yeah, Zane. Fifty-seven nineteenths. Is that? Do you know that fifty-seven can be divided by nineteen? Yeah, seriously, fifty-seven divided by nineteen. And these answers, you guys are having like an ugly answer contest. Did you get the same as Dicey? Well, you and Gabe, you and G homie got the same thing. So maybe there's there's hope.
the difficulty has certainly gone up. If you play any rock band or guitar hero, you know in rock band how would like before you pick a song, it has like the little do you guys even play rock band anymore? Um, That's an old man thing, probably. I played it with my dad like three times. Yeah. These these ones now have the devil horns. These are hard. These are tough problems. I did whatever I could do up there on the board to show you exactly what your mindset has to be. I mean, I nice. Uh oh, this is this is looking good. This is looking good. Okay. I tried to use my neatest colors and arrows and stuff to show you what your mind has to be doing. The first one half just drops down. The sign, the less than sign drops down. The X drops down. And then I put little bubbles around them just to try to draw your attention to the fact, because, you know, we got 23 and a half more hours before you have to take a quiz. Just please remember that your focus is inside those boxes. So the first thing I'm going to do inside this red box is I'm going to take this negative two and I'm going to multiply it to right there. And this, this should go well. I know it's, it scares some of you, but really at the end of the day, you just kind of ask yourself this, the whole, the whole number outside two, can it divide by the bottom three? No. Then we just proceed to make a fraction. Once you realize that the little trick isn't going to work, then you just go, eh, screw it. And then you just say, okay, that's a negative times a positive. It's negative. And then I simply do two thirds X. It is what it is. Nothing to it. Do you think of the two as a two over one and you just go straight across the top and the bottom. And then the second multiplication, you probably don't need an explanation for that. That's a negative two times another negative four, which makes a positive eight. So whew, we survived the red box and now we're on to the blue box. In the blue box, again, there's one uncomfortable and one comfortable. I'd ask you the same question again. Can the whole number three divide by the two? So that's when, again, we just suck it up and go, whatever. So we just get three halves of X. And then the other multiplier is like, yeah, that's easy. That's just three times negative one, and that's negative, negative three. three. So this is what your first line. Yeah, I look at some of the things you guys do, and I ask the same questions. What the what? All right, well, let's leave it there just so we can... I'm not taking anything off. I am going. This is normally when I would guide you and say, like, you should look for things that can go together. Like, if you had some friendly like terms, like a five and a minus three, I'd say, nah, make them a two. But it, it, this is just ugly. There's absolutely no benefit in monkeying around here. So I'm going to stick on some monster brackets. What am I going to multiply by? For sure. And we're not, good job. Yay, yay. And we're not out of the woods yet. Because the six has to do six multiplication problems. And so here we go. The first one is right there. What is six times one over two? Three. It is three. This is one time when it's maybe not appropriate to do six over two because you try the hook thing and it should always work. I mean, if we picked a good, if my yellow number is good, then this hook will always work. I shouldn't have to do any fractions. Now, what would be the point, right? A fraction killing and then get fraction. And then I keep going over and then do it again. So six divided by three is two times two is four. So it's minus four X six times eight is six and eight went on a date, came back home is 48. Um, this one right here, I did not write down eight. You guys really need to get your eyes checked. That clearly says 48. Well, that's because I was saying that stupid rhyme. I clearly can't rhyme and write the same time. Uh, go heading over to the other side. Six divided by two is three. Three times three is nine. Six times negative three is negative 18. And then all the way across six, all the way times X is. Whew, and we made it. I mean, we're not done, but we made it. If you, you shouldn't struggle from here, quite frankly. So let's keep going. Hey, Bryce, I need you to quit talking all the time. Okay. Sorry, buddy. Uh, on the left side, I got a three and a plus 48, and that makes 51. And on the right side, I got some X's to put together. Nine X and six X make 15 X. 
And then from here, you know I'm going to move my x to the left. So I'm going to subtract 15x across, and that's going to give me negative 19x's. And if my x's have taken over the left, and then I'm going to subtract 51 across, which is going to give me negative 69. And then you're not out of the woods. we got to divide by negative 19, and that's tough. Be careful. So your x comes down, your sign does switch, and you do wind up with a positive like that. So that last answer that like a bunch of you got was definitely correct. I got one more, and guess what it's got? Fractions. What's the matter, goblins? You did, did you do another two wrongs making a right? No. Oh. No. Oh. Just always remember when I grade these that I, I've i said it before, and I hope you believe me by now, I literally read your work like a book. To me, it's a little short story, and I just savor every little delicious drop of your work. And so if I see things that are wrong, then I, you know, every, every, so you know that. I, I Answers are important, but how we get there to me is equally important. So last one. negative two thirds of X minus the quantity of three fourths of X plus two closed quantity is greater than three halves of X plus three times the quantity of one fourth of X minus four. If the first thing you do is multiply by six, then I clearly need to look for different work. Stop trying to kill fractions if some of them are hiding from you. So I will do again what I did last time and try to illustrate for you what you should be doing. It's important to focus on what am I doing and what am I just copying down. I didn't realize this would wind up taking almost the whole hour, but as these problems get harder, they do take longer to go through and, and work. So once we're done with this problem, we'll probably only have five minutes of class left and you can get Maybe a few problems done. Just like that last problem, I expect to get several potential answers this time. I think the last time we had five or four or five candidates. At some point when you have to multiply a 12 by a 12, which you should be doing right about now-ish, you guys know that that's 144, right? Thank you. You're welcome. Was it just, was it right at the right time? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really mean for that to happen, but I do see now that you're going to have to do that yellow problem over there and you're going to get negative 12 and then you're going to fraction kill by a 12 and get a minus 144. So, lo siento. I'm expecting some, some, 
seriously ugly answers here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Los números son muy grandes. Did you get it? Would you like to volunteer? X is less than 44 elevens, which actually I'm going to fix that. So 44 divided by 11 is actually four. So yours would actually just be four. No idea. Well, Bryce, actually, wait, hang on. Gabe, I want you. Holy crikeys, Gabe. That is ugly. Zane. 30 elevenths. Zane, did you say 30? I still can't hear because because of what's going on. Did you get 30 over 11? Okay. Sebastian? So you are on the right track. It sounds like you and Zane are working the same way, but one of you had a sign issue. I don't know who, I don't know the answer. I'm not just toying with you. I don't have a clue. So give you guys about another minute for more answers to trickle in. Then I should probably start going through it. This is gonna be a long YouTube recording today. This is gonna be one of those ones when I upload it to YouTube, it takes like 15 minutes to process. These ones, I got to just start them and then go do something else for a while. We have four candidates right now. Do I have another one coming? Okay. You're reducing of your fraction? I can help you with that if you'd like. What What is your current fraction? 128 over 47? But that's not reducible. So I'm going to, I'll put that up here for you. 47 is a prime number, so it's not going to play nice with anything. So you have X is what? Bless you. Okay. So that's going to have to go back to being a fraction. So, well, I can tell you that 60 divided by 3 is 20. What way? So it's x is less than 1, 2, 0 over 47. Eklund, did you say you got a whole number, 3? Oh, so 20. So X is... So overall, you have a negative. So you have negative 120 over 34. So you and... Uh, look at me running out of real estate. I'm out of room! You guys uh, must have done something similarly to get 120s. Yeah, I got a Did you say negative 120 over six? Yeah. Uh, that should be negative 20, so not 20. I do have to move on now. Um, sorry if you're still working, not to be rude, but I mean, it is what it is. So um, on the red side there, the inside the red box, first off, I hope you're all clear that there are non-negotiables. There are things that we just copy down. And then inside the red box, that's our favorite kind of, well, assuming we don't do anything stupid. That should be our favorite kind of distribution because all I got to do is change the signs. So, so like I, I bring three quarters of X down, but I bring them down now as a negative three quarters of X. And then I bring that plus two down, but I bring them down as a minus two. If you're still missing that, I would say you got to get your, get your head in the game that we got to be done. I said that earlier. Um, and then on the right side, this is the kind of distribution that we kind of don't like, but once we get confident with it, we realize that, oh, this is easy. I just stick the three over the four, slap an X on there, easy. And then the three and the minus four make a minus 12. So step one is there, 
Are we good? There it is. Now it's time to kill some fractions. No, no sense in doing anything other than this. So I'm going to put on some brackets. What am I going to multiply by? Yeah, I already kind of let that cat out of the bag. So this should just be a hook fest where you just divide, multiply, divide, multiply, divide. Just get, if it doesn't work, you're doing something wrong. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9, so minus 9x. 12 times negative 2, negative 24. 12 divided by 2 is 6 times 3 is 18. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 12 times negative 12, the aforementioned, yeah. 12 times 12 is 144. I know, because that's how they sell bottle rockets. I always remember that as a kid, because I really liked bottle rockets. And if you've ever bought a, have you ever bought a pack of bottle rockets? Yeah. They come in what we call a gross. That's 144, and they're conveniently packaged in 12 packs of 12. So the gross of bottle rockets is 12 times 12. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to combine like terms on the left. I'm going to get negative 17 X's. Minus 24 is greater than. And then on the right, I'm going to get positive 27x's minus 144. This is a mess, right? And I'm just going to, don't really care, going to throw my variables over to the left, making negative 44. Right? Take away 27 from an already negative 17. And then I'm going to throw the 24 over to the right side as a plus 24, giving me negative 120. What's up, dude? Good. Listen, if you're figuring out what you did wrong, then we're using time well today. If you're just sitting there like staring at the board and waiting for class to be over, then you're just wasting taxpayer money. But if you're making mistakes today and finding them, then we're accomplishing a mission. Yeah. That's okay. That's not wrong. No, you can do that if you want. I don't know if you heard Sebastian, what he said, but scrolling back up real quick, he fraction killed by negative 12. And honestly, I could go both ways on this just because it does serve a good benefit here if you do that. But it also, there's enough positives that it's not hugely, but you could. Yeah, then it, for you, if, I mean, if you're already adding fractions together with unlike denominators, then fraction killing isn't as purposeful for you as it is generally. Because the purpose for me of fraction killing is that I never have to add two fractions together or anything like that. But if you can do that, you know, more power to you. I just, I quit teaching it that way. Once I realized that that was going to be a struggle spot, then I was like, let's wipe them out. Boom. So anyhow, here we are. Uh, and you should have all gotten to this point if things went well. At some point, you're all dividing something like a 120 divided by a 44. And when I divide both sides by negative 44, uh, there's a, it's a mess, right? So it becomes X is less than. And it definitely is 120 over 44. However, that can be reduced because I don't know. I think you knew this, that 120 and 44 can both be divided by four. four. And if you divide them both by four, you get a final answer of X is less than 30 over 11. Which... We did get who 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 busted this one up here? Who's yellow box? It's nice work. Uh, I can look at it for you if you want. I'm sorry, the class is like over. I mean, I'm not sorry, it was time well spent, but I thought we'd have work time. But I'm gonna stop my recording real quick and then I'm gonna go answer a question. And then tomorrow's quiz day, so 